Hey, and welcome to Strategically Helpful. So I'm Allie, and today's episode, I am sharing a tour of my primary closet. About a year and change ago, I made over this closet with Ikea Pax units and Ikea Calax, and I've had a year to live in the closet, really fine tune all the different areas. And I know that when I was in the process of making over this closet, I looked online for a lot of videos to get inspiration and insight into the best way that the closet would suit my needs. So that's my intent with this video, is to share my thought process, my methodology, what I found works the best, some of the things that didn't work out for me. And I hope that in sharing this video, that if you are also considering making over your closet with Ikea packs, maybe you'll get some helpful insight or tips from what I have to share. So I'm just gonna get into the video. So when I set out to make over this closet, I did it because I had some gripes about the old setup. So I'm gonna show a before video of my old closet. So as you can see, I had a wall of these uh, cubby kind of units and I was using the fabric bins to create a makeshift kind of drawer system, but it was the only location in this closet that I had a drawer system. Everything else was hangers. And so I had a lot of things that could otherwise be folded up, but because I didn't have any options, everything was hung up. And I really wanted more drawers and I also wanted more shelf space. So combining the Calyx with the packs really gave me an opportunity to really like customize every nook and cranny of this closet. And that's just the type of person I am. I really need things in my face and reminding me of the stuff that I have. And so having everything hung up was just really not super functional. And because I didn't have any shelf space, things frequently just lived on the floor. And it was just challenging. Bottom line, I decided I wasn't happy with the old setup and that's what set me on this path. Let's just do a high level uh, to get, give you the bearings of this room. So when I think of these IKEA PAX units, they basically come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. And effectively, the large in my head is approximately 40 inches, so I think of this as my 40 incher. Next to it is my 20 incher. Next to that with the mirror right here is a 30 incher, but it's only the shallow depth, so I think that's like 14, 13 inches. And then right here is another 30 incher. And then in between that, I have the Calax units. Now. I did acknowledge that when I was combining Calex and Pax, that they are not the same depth. So you can see right over my shoulder, um, you can see that there is just a little step out there from the deep packs to the Calax. That's not that big of a deal for me. And what that did is it enabled me to kind of regain that much space as far as like open floor space. So that was okay with me. And then on this wall, I have two of the IKEA Calax units, the four by fours that are stacked. In a nutshell, I'm gonna discuss the different zones in here, but so I'm just gonna gloss over this stuff, but by all means, if you want more detail, I am more than happy to share it. But basically my zones are as follows. This top section here is where my kind of work wear tops live. So in the winter time, this is where my sweaters live and kind of warm, you know, kind of cold weather gear. And in the summertime, this is where my short sleeve shirts that are a little bit more appropriate for like dressy going out and then down below is actually where my sweatshirts and my weekend wear and my layering attire lives so i just leave these here year round but this section right here when i'm swapping out my winter and my summer clothes one of the things that i love about this closet is that this guy right up here these are like clothing storage containers they fit right up at the top well i actually have two of those and I will show you the other one in a minute, but I'm able to put all of my cold weather, big, chunky, bulky sweaters in there. And I'll show you a picture of this packs with my winter gear. So you can kind of get a sense of how much fits in the tube. That might help you if you're trying to estimate how much space you have. And then the other thing I have right here is 
Initially, I had a pull-out drawer at the bottom and I had my shoes at the bottom. And then I decided that I would actually get more real estate if I put the shelf up here and then just use the bottom shelf. So the bottom shelf is preserved for my like house slippers. So I can just kind of kick them off and throw them right there. And I actually like this for my tennis shoes because oftentimes I will take my tennis shoes off in the kitchen, in the TV room, somewhere else. And so I'm always picking them up and walking them back into the closet or vice versa. I'm picking them up and walking them out there to put them on before I go to the gym. So I actually like having them like at this height. And I did do kind of um, estimating when I was placing the hanging rod to make sure that the bottom of my clothes wouldn't be kind of brushing up against the shoes. And as you can see, it happens on a few of them, but it's really not bad. Um, and then I did line this shelf with this rubber um, doormat. It's actually an Ikea doormat, but I flipped it over so that the rubber part is on top, just so that I don't damage the surface underneath. And you know, if I walk in the mud and I put my shoes down, I just don't really care that I'm getting mud or anything on this material. And then underneath that, the thing that I love, this is my folding shelf. When I made the decision to have more drawers in this closet, I knew that that meant that I would need to be able to fold my clothes with ease or my success rate of actually putting clothes away was gonna be really low. So this thing has turned out great. I'm able to just use it as like a holding pattern where I'm going through my laundry and I need to kind of sort things out and I'll drop in a video of me kind of doing my laundry or a little snip. But in the same vein that I covered the tennis shoe shelf with a liner. Um, I also covered this one, but these liners are actually from the Dollar Tree. They're really small dollar mats, but um, I think I had to buy four. So for four bucks, I was able to line this whole thing. So the other thing that I did add right here, let me bring this down a bit, is one of these things. So this is a Rev a shelf, I believe. I didn't want something to be protruding all the time. So I really like the fact that this can go in and out. And then it was really easy to install on the Ikea units because I kind of used some of the holes that already existed. So this is great when I'm either wanting to hang something on this, maybe an outfit that I'm kind of coordinating. I can put it here and then when I'm done, it just pops right in. These both came off of Amazon. They came in a stack, a set of two. So I'll show you the second one in a minute. So this is like a super oversized 3M hook. And I've got about seven hangers kind of stationed there. That's kind of my temporary holding pattern, but I actually have more room and I'll kind of take you over there in a second um, for more overflow hangers. And then this ladder is phenomenal. So I knew that I wanted to have a ladder in this space, especially because the Calyx goes all the way to the ceiling and because I had the storage right there. And so I just wanted to have ease of efficiency whenever I had to get up there. So I found this ladder on Amazon. It is super duper lightweight. It folds out like that. It's got four steps. So it is perfect as far as height wise for me getting up to the top shelf. And then this is just another little hook. So the hook itself, if you can see right here, it's actually about half an inch. I just wanted it so that the ladder couldn't fall out no matter what. So. So now let's come over and talk about the 20 incher. Now I did have to kind of overlap these a bit. So I would say probably about half of the 20 incher is slightly obstructed, but it's really not bad because I can reach in and get, let's see, can I show you? Like I can reach in and touch the edge really, really easily. And this space is dedicated for all of my like full length dresses, skirts and whatnot. There's my surplus hanger collection. So that's where the rest of it lives. And then still I'm able to access all the dresses that are in the space. And then the shelf at the very tippy top up here, that's just kind of overflow for shoes or supplies. Um, and then the same thing down here. So down here, I did the kind of the same thing that I did with my folding shelves. I lined these shelves because I knew that I was gonna be putting boots on these and I just wanted to protect the surface, but this is just set in there. The shoes are kind of keeping it in place. It's not attached. And so these three shelves right here are where my tall um, boots with the tall kind of ankles live and just kind of any kind of shoes that don't fit in the other space that's dedicated for my shoes. 
Hold on, my dog is losing his mind because he can't be in it. Come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, my dog is freaking out because I'm in here, so he's gonna join us for this. Okay, so moving around the room, next up is the mirrored cabinet. So initially, this cabinet actually had a lot of things that I started with and then learned they weren't the best choices and I swapped them out, which is what's so great about Ikea. So initially I started with the all full length mirror doors that Ikea sells. It's actually cheaper than the doors that have the frame on them. And when I installed those doors, it kind of felt like a dressing room in here. Um, it is kind of confined just a little bit and it just didn't feel like a closet to me. So. I swapped those out for the ones with the frames. They were more expensive, but in the end, I am glad that I did it. And that frame style actually matches the drawers that I'm gonna be showing in a minute. And then the other lesson I learned was, I initially started with drawers, the mesh drawers that Ikea includes for the packs. And I'll insert a picture of having the mesh drawers. But what I realized is I didn't want to have the hassle to open up both doors every single time I was putting clothes away. That was like so much work. I was like, I know this is gonna to be too much friction and I'm just not gonna be diligent about keeping the space clean. So in the end, I returned all of those mesh drawers and I went with the shelves and I am much happier for it. We'll talk about the parking spots in a minute or at least what I call the parking spots. But first, um, the other thing that I chose not to do, Ikea does have the pull out kind of cloth laundry bags and I think those are awesome but my laundry room is across the house and so I wanted to be able to take my laundry basket take it all the way to the laundry room and then leave this basket in that space while the clothes are being washed and then load the clothes back into the basket and bring them back in here to put them away and say I want to put something on top of the laundry basket. I don't necessarily want to put it in the laundry, but I don't know if you're like me. Sometimes I wear my pajamas a couple nights in a row. I just wanted to have kind of like a parking lot option. So love that about these. And yes, I do pre-sort my laundry into lights and darks. So of course, when I bought these, of course I'm going to buy the proper colors. And then the rest of the space, I have talked about this in one of my videos in the past, but so in the end, I decided I didn't want to have my pants stacked because again, I know myself too well and I'm not gonna be diligent enough to keep those stacks in a nice tidy order. And I just didn't wanna have like wonky stacks that would kind of topple over. You can see in the top here, these guys are my corduroy pants that I wear in the wintertime. So those are just gonna live up on the top shelf and then when, the weather changes, I will swap those for the pants right here. These are my hiking pants that are really great in Las Vegas in 100 plus degree heat. So I just love the parking spot organization because especially for my jeans down here, some of my jeans are capris, some of my jeans are boot cut, some of my jeans are skinny. I've got a whole variety. And when I was folding them the way that Marie Kondo kind of taught me, I realized that it was really hard for me to identify which pair of jeans is this from my vantage point. So in the end, I love this. It's bookends that I just taped together with duct tape. In fact, that is why the duct tape is still in here. So if you'd like to know more about that, there is a video, I will link it right here. I think that's, I don't know which corner it's gonna be. Um, so I will link it if you'd like to see that, but that is the mirrored closet. Okay, jumping from the mirrored cabinet, I'm actually gonna finish talking about the packs and then I'm gonna focus on the Kallax. So this is the final packs wardrobe that I have in here. This is the 30 inch shirt. So as you can see up here, I have the second of the two winter clothes storing items. And so it fits right up there, phenomenal. Then just have the same rod and I have the same rev shelf. And then coming down, I went with a glass shelf here and that was mainly to ensure that I remember that underneath this shelf, I have this drawer right here. So I am 45, my eyesight is going, so I know that I am going to be needing glasses. In fact, I've already started buying cheaters and my sunglasses. And so I just like having this dedicated space for these accessories that I know I'm gonna need in the future. Now, this is actually a hack that saved me $50. This is the Up to Terra kitchen utensil drawer insert that Ikea has in their kitchen section. I made a video about this 
um, and I'll link it right here. But this is actually like $12, I think. And all I used was some fabric glue to glue these together. No, it doesn't fit in this section as nicely and as like perfect like a glove as the ones that Ikea sells, but they are like 50 bucks. And so I really liked this to save money. And then the, these are the black boxes that you can get from Ikea. And so they just fit nicely. Again, I kind of prioritize function over form. So the fact that it doesn't fit perfectly does not bother me whatsoever. However, saving 50 bucks or more, definitely I'm in favor of that. So then moving down from here. So these are those shelves that I said match the frame of the mirror. I know that I do really well when I have labels that reminds me of what is inside the thing that I can't see. Uh, and if you can't tell, I definitely rely on labels to tell me what is in everything. Um, but for me, I find that it's really functional and helpful. So I even did that right down here behind the handles. And in the closet here, I decided to use like icons instead of words, just because I felt like, you know, words belong in the office, icons belong in the closet. So this first drawer is my socks. So I have created subcategories in here. Some of these drawer dividers are from Ikea, some are from Amazon. Some I just kind of utilized negative space outside the organizers. This is not Marie Kondo approved probably. All I do is just fold them kind of a tri-fold like that and then just stick them in. They stay relatively tidy. As you can see, these don't have that kind of same style. It is what it is. It's just what, what works for me. Then this drawer, very similar. These are kind of just my hanging around lounge tops and um, it's like sleep tops or tank tops for the summertime. My next one is my long sleeve tops or my collection of supplies when I am using the sauna bed. So because I have a sauna bed, I wear long sleeves in that setup. So everything lives here. Then this last one is, second to last one, is my boxer shorts and my pajama bottoms. Basically all of my pajama bottoms live down here. And then in the very, very bottom right here uh, is my workout gear. So this is another thing. I love being able to have my tops and my workout pants in the same drawer so that when I'm getting ready to work out, I just have to come here and I'm ready to walk out the door, which always helps the less friction that I have. And now I'm gonna show you. So these shoes are on the floor. I wore these today. So that's a perfect opportunity to come over here and show you my shoe setup. So this is the bottom of the Calax. So I'm gonna kind of scoop back. And Bruce, I really beg of you. This is where I keep all my shoes. Again, I really like having everything that I own out in the open so that I see it and I remember it and I reach for it when I want it. And it just works for me. It is definitely far from the minimalist aesthetic that has been really popular in recent years, but that just doesn't work for me. If I try to put everything away, I forget I own it. And then I end up with 14 of the exact same pair of shoe as evidenced by this section because I forget what I own. So for me, I want everything out and I also wanna be able to reach for it easily. So as you can see, I kind of just have the shoes stacked on top of each other. And then these are the Ikea. I think of them as like the H inch certs, but they're basically just a shelf insert that goes right in. This is another accessory from Ikea that offers hanging kind of from the top as the bottom. This whole section, when I constructed this Calax, I intentionally left this piece out here because I knew I had this collection of all of these Nerve myofascial release tools. Um, Rad Roller is a product. I had a pinch nerve. Their products are absolutely phenomenal. They come out with all kinds of things like yoga blocks and these peanut balls. And so I like having them right here because if you can't tell, this one I'm sitting on is, excuse me, Bruce, this is a yoga mat. And so I, like I said, I had a pinch nerve and I figured out that I had to do stretches daily and I needed a way to work that into my daily routine. So now, as you can see, I'm basically sitting on the floor right now. I'm really accustomed to sitting on the floor in this closet because I come in here and when I feel that my neck or my upper back is getting tight or my shoulders are tight, I'll come in here, I'll change into my pajamas and then I will just sit down on the floor and do my routine. And sometimes I will face this mirror, sometimes I'll face the other mirror, sometimes I will lie down and do stretches, but I just kind of figured out the only way for me to be consistent was to make it so that whenever I needed these tools, they were available and within reach. 
All right, moving up from the shoes, next up is the Best Craft Organizer drawers. So as I explained in my previous video, I absolutely love these drawers. I love the customizability and the kind of versatility. So you can see there is a very deep drawer, there is a medium drawer, and then there's actually three um, really shallow drawers. So I kind of followed consistency. Oh, that's the mirror. <laughs> I kind of followed consistency across. And then this one, I just did three of the deep. And when I say deep, these are really, really deep. I have an entire first aid kit in here. I have some kind of first aid bandages in here. This is like medicine and um, the you know COVID tests. And these are the different medicines and cold and flu stuff. And the very, very top, this is my collection of band-aids. So I just don't have the time or interest. I know <laughs> this is contrary to what we just saw in my socks. But for band-aids, I never know what I need when I'm gonna need them. So I just wanna be able to shove them around, find whichever one I need. And it's just great to come right here. I have a little bit of skin protectant. I love these drawers for that. And then the other nice thing is that, oh, this one's empty. They come right out. So if I ever need to take those somewhere else, if I had any reason to, so I've kind of showed these before, so I'm just gonna go through them really quickly. This is a divider that a Best Craft Organizer offers. You can just have them empty. You can store just all kinds of different things in there. These are cords for the different like electronics and appliances that I use specifically in my bathroom. I'm pretty sure, yeah. See, I'll either hand write on it or I will use a label maker. Whatever works, as long as it's functional. Um, over here, I have my earrings. So I divvied up my earrings between kind of posts, then tiny hoops because I absolutely love tiny hoops, and then my larger dangly. I am kind of gearing up to do a major purge of a lot of stuff that I just haven't touched for close to a decade. This is just kind of overflow. This is one of the um, surplus boxes that came with the sunglasses. Me, but I have like cleaning cloths and all the different cloths for the sunglasses. Lastly, over here is, this is actually my nail uh, care kit. So I actually got a, my manicuring license way back in the day, and so I'm able to do my own nails. So this is where a lot of my nail supplies are stored. This drawer isn't completely empty. And I love the fact that I have so much crap in this closet, and yet I still have space to grow if I ever want to. So this shelf is kind of just a parking lot. So you can kind of see the wall back there. Well, right to the left of this, I had an electrical outlet added on that wall. And you can see right down there, I have an outlet. Because one day I do hope to actually put a red light panel on this wall. And so I, I wanted to have the appropriate extension cord right there so that I could add that. And now my now Bruce thinks it's a toy. Excuse me, don't do that. So yeah, that is a goal for a future day. All right, back to the Calyx. So this is just kind of a parking lot for, first of all, it's a shelf. So it's just kind of a parking lot and a shelf for things like my steamer. This is my anti-wrinkle spray when I'm being lazy and I don't want to steam. I've got kind of some overflow body lotion in here. And it's just nice to have a place where things can just kind of live. It doesn't get too cluttery. And then when I need to, I can kind of find a home for them. So moving to the left, this row of items are basically my intimates. So I've got my underwear here, I've got my light colored bras, and I've got my dark colored bras. But so I just love that like ease of from organization, like everything lives in there. Felt. Drawers that are meant to be drawer dividers, but I'm actually using them for like quasi drawers, even though they're kind of dividers. So this setup is my sports bras. I got spaghetti tanks. I got um, kind of athletic shorts. I have handy towels, because if you have dogs, you know that on occasion, you need to run and grab for a towel. And then this is my kind of mobile nail enhancement removing basket. So this is everything I need if I'm ever trying to soak off my nail enhancements. And I will take this whole basket to the TV room or wherever I'm sitting to soak off my nails. And I love having the ability to kind of take the kit with me. And then when I'm done, I just bring it right back here. So again, it's kind of a little parking lot. All right, to save time, I'm just gonna kind of scan over what the rest of this stuff is. So this container holds like my overflow of lotion and 
shampoos and conditioners and whatnot. Now, uh, moving to the left, this is my winter kind of hats when it's cold, when I'm giving the dogs a W-A-L-K, -okay, since he's in here, I'm not saying it. This is uh, like my overflow hair styling. I've got rollers in there. I've got a sp spare blow dryer in there. There is a my one-piece bathing suits. Above that is my two-piece bathing suits. Moving to the right is the appliances, so you can kind of see I have a steamer and a clothing shaver icon. That basket has not gotten a label yet, so I can't even tell you what's in there. <laughs> and then on the far right is my ball caps, so they're all stored there. And then at the very tippy top, this entire row is basically my collection of travel supplies. So whether it's tags or uh, packing cubes or whatnot, they live in that basket. This one, that is for my makeup kits or my toiletry bags. Moving to the left is where I have the stuff that I bring when I'm on the plane um, for carry-on. And then this one is just overflow, more crap. I don't exactly know what's in there. So the last thing I'm gonna touch on is this space above the packs. So I decided that I wanted to build a DIY cabinet to go into these two spaces. So in fact, you can see this is the final product. So these are actually surplus IKEA pieces. And so my husband helped me go and get the kit and sort through and find all of the kind of surplus IKEA pieces so that I could build these cabinets. Now, you may be wondering, well, what happened to this one right here? I will insert a picture of the original one that I had, and you probably will be able to tell from that picture that it is a little wonky. And so I'm actually remaking that one. And so for the time being, my luggage is just living up there as is. So this fits the largest of our suitcases, and we have two suitcases, one that nests inside the other. So I have two suitcases in there. I have our carry-on, my carry-on in there. And then this is kind of the middle suitcase. Traditional coat hooks for my pajamas or the things that I am not ready to put in the laundry, but I'm also not wanting to put away. And then just to finish it off behind the door, I have more hanging hooks. Hey, I'm back. So I'm actually watching my playback, making sure that I said everything I wanted to say about the closet. So I did take the route of using the little white plugs to plug up all of the holes that are on the Ikea packs. I ended up buying my package of white little plugs from Amazon because I did the math. I think I needed roughly like, let's say a thousand plugs. And I think for Amazon, I could get a thousand plugs for like five bucks. And I think if I got it from Ikea, it was gonna be more than $10. So it wasn't much of a savings, but the good news is if you are kind of like me and you wanna, you know, make every stretch every dollar, um, I will drop in the description below the plugs specifically that I used. They were great. They, you know, you kind of have to tap them in. So I used like a mallet or like a craft hammer. Um, and so they're really firm and um, they stay in there securely. And then the other thing that I found, and this thing was so cool. So I'm gonna drop a video in and of it now, but it is a wax pen. I don't remember exactly what the purpose of this pen is, but for my needs, one edge has like this white crayon tip where you just run it over, say you have a hole or a knot or some kind of blemish on your surface. You just run the pen over a few times. The wax slowly fills in the opening and then the other end of the pen kind of has the spatula and you can kind of wipe over it and erase any kind of part of the wax that is maybe um, higher than the surface. And as you see in this video, the little extra holes that are cut into the PAX units basically become invisible. So I will link this in the description below, but I love this. What I'm showing you right now is the bottom corner of the mirrored cabinet. So when I open it, especially because I have those laundry baskets in there, this is just a nice way to have that clean, crisp kind of um, aesthetic. And so definitely uh, worth kind of cutting in. So yeah, that is my closet in a nutshell. So I don't know right off the bat right now how much this closet costs, but in my head, I I'm pretty confident that it came in under $3,000. I think it's closer to about 2,500, but the actual number will be on the screen right now. 
those fabric bins that have the weave, those are actually from Target and they are just, or at least at the time that I purchased them, they were $10 a piece. Whereas the closest kind of equivalent that Ikea has was $12. So, but yeah, so that is my closet. I hope that these tips and insights and things that I shared are helpful for you in your journey. If you enjoy this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing because this is the kind of stuff that I love talking about. I have another video that I did from my kitchen and one that is in the works I made over my studio office closet. That one I did with just Calax and I actually didn't buy any accessories. I got the Calax used. I have another one of these kind of tour videos coming up as soon as I finish that project. If you got value out of this video, please give me a thumbs up. Not only does it benefit me, but it also helps the algorithm to know the kind of content that you enjoy. And so the algorithm will serve you up more content that's in line with your interests and tastes. And finally, I hope to see you in my next video. And until then, have a good one.